In this video, I'm going to be ranking every boss in Arc Survival Evolved, except this time I'm going to be ranking them from easiest to hardest. Now keep in mind, I'm a solo player, so I'm going to be ranking this from a solo player's perspective. Also, I haven't really played the custom maps too much, so my rankings on those ones were a bit harder to do. Coming in at number 16 as the easiest boss in Arc is the Megapithecus. I don't think anyone's surprised here. It's just not really that hard of a boss. It doesn't really have that much health. It doesn't do that much damage. I mean, it can do some damage, but this thing's really easy to take on on the island. All you need is a Rex army, and you can even bring, like, Spino armies. I've seen people bring... You can pretty much bring anything you want to this boss fight, but... Just a good army of Rexes will take this thing down super quickly, and it's a really easy way to, like, farm element and stuff on the island. It's just a super easy boss fight. I don't really know what to say about it. At number 15, we have the Manticore, the only boss on Scorched Earth, and it's kind of sad that the only boss on Scorched Earth is this easy, because it makes it a lot less challenging. It does have one annoying effect that basically like, drains the Torpor of all your dinos, but if you know how to deal with it, it's not really too hard. Basically, the only thing that's hard about this is more of an annoyance than the fact that it, you just have to wait for it to land every 5 seconds. Most people just bring Rexes into this fight, and you can take it on pretty easily. It has a damage resistance, but it also only has like 250,000 health. So the damage resistance basically makes up for it having so little health, but it's pretty easy to take on. And at number 14, we have the Desert Titan. This one's quite interesting, as you don't, none of the old methods work as just bringing Rexes or stuff like that. You have to use some sort of different method because it only flies and it won't land. But that being said, it's not really that powerful. It doesn't really have much health, and the attacks aren't that bad. It just has a lightning stun that can stun you off your mount, but if you just move carefully, then you'll be fine. And then it has a bite attack, which is pretty easy to avoid. Just stay away from its mouth and you'll be good. With that all being said, you can use some pretty easy strategies like just bringing an army of some sort of flyer, or you can just use a Giga on the back of a Quetzal and melt through it pretty easily. And at number 13, we have the Forest Titan. You'll notice the Titans are really low on this list. And that's because they are easy, I and mean, the reason they're easy is because they're world bosses, which that basically means you can bring whatever you want to this fight. Normal bosses, you can only bring a cap of 20 creatures and like 10 survivors, and of course those creatures will have it to be a certain drag weight, so you can't bring gigas or anything to normal boss fights, but with these, the titans, you can. You can literally bring whatever you want. You can send on the back of a mech with your army of 100 gigas and melt through it in 5 seconds, which is why they're going to be low on this list, because you can literally bring whatever you want, which definitely takes the challenge away. That being said, I don't dislike these bosses because of that. I think they're cool, and the reason they're above something like the Megapithecus and Manticores is because they do have some pretty devastating attacks, especially the Forest Titan, where it can like wrap your guy in trees and stuff it can be pretty brutal as well as it being able to just grab you straight off your mount with that like root attack and number 12 coming after that is the ice titan the same reasons that it's low on the list as the forest titan you could literally bring 100 gigas and melt through this thing but the ice titan is higher because it has some pretty brutal attacks compared to this thing it basically has a giant ice ball that can instantly freeze all your creatures it has ice breath that freezes them as well the giant ice spikes that do a bunch of damage this thing is really really strong which is why it's higher than everything else but still pretty easy because you can bring a ton of gigas and kill it pretty quickly and at number 11, we have Modair. This is the first and only underwater boss, and that does make it an interesting challenge, but still, it's not incredibly difficult. Mainly because the underwater creatures you can bring are really strong, like the Mosasaurs and Tusos, which are both really good options, and you could take it out pretty easily with just an army of those. And I've seen people, a lot of people, don't even bring a full army of like 20 Moses. I usually do just to be safe, but you know, so I've seen people come in with just a few Moses and take this thing down. So if you only need a few Mosasaurs to take it down, then obviously it's not that difficult. But at number 10, we have the Dinopithecus King. This is the first of the custom map dinos, and it gets a little bit more challenging here. Definitely more challenging than the Megapithecus or Manticore. This one has minions that are actually kind of annoying, like the Dinopithecus that spawn. It also has the Dinopithecus that float around on Cynomacrops, as well as ones riding a Margosaurus. So you have those to deal with, as well as it being pretty strong, being able to throw giant turds at you. And then it can jump up on the ledge and kind of defend itself from there which are all definitely things that you have to worry about during this fight. And it is decently strong, but not the hardest in the game. And at number 9, we have the Crystal Wy Wyvern Queen. This one's stepping it up a little bit in difficulty. It's basically a giant wyvern that has a bunch of different breath attacks that can be kind of devastating, as well as it has a ton of wyverns that will come and chase you around, which is another thing that you have to worry about in this boss fight. But overall, I think it's pretty challenging. We're starting to get into the more difficult boss fights now. And at number 8, we have the Finnir Sulfur. Kind of weird how all the custom boss maps managed to all clump together. But I guess that's just how the list turned out. But I definitely think Finnir Sulfur might be the most difficult out of all of them. 
because it's got some crazy strong attacks like that one where you can shoot out a giant wolf at you or, or it's just surrounding itself with giant ice spikes and walls or you got the really strong fin nears you have to deal with and of course you have all the stuff leading up to it in Fjordr. I think this is a pretty cool boss and definitely bringing up the challenge. But in number 7 we have the Broodmother back to the island and some of the more basic guardians. This has always just been a quite difficult one. It's not insanely difficult but it is one that you definitely have to worry about. And getting into like the Alpha Broodmother it can be kind of d difficult to fight. Basically you need like a full army of like Rexes or you could bring Megatheriums. Those work really great against it but... Even then, it does a ton of damage and can take those creatures out, even those really strong Rexes, pretty quickly. So, overall, this is a pretty good one as why well as number 7, but there are a lot more difficult bosses coming up. And at number 6, we have Rockwell Prime, the final boss of Arc Survival Evolved. And this one's a more unique one. Instead of just sending your dinos in, you basically have to go through waves of destroying these giant tentacles that spawn. And then you have to get in the Exomech and then destroy his, like, weird... I don't know, like, different versions of himself, I'm not really sure. And then it eventually he'll pop into his final Rockwell form. You've got, like, a ton of Guardians and stuff coming after you and destroying you, and it's pretty tough. It's not the hardest in the game, but we're definitely getting pretty difficult. I think it's more difficult than something like the Broodmother, because you don't just sit on the back of a Utyrannus and, like, do your roar. You actually have to be in the fight a little bit and actually think a little bit more. But there, are, of course, there are way harder bosses that are just about to come up. And at number 5, we have the dragon. We're getting into the top 5 now, and this is where it starts to get really hard. The dragon has a breath fire attack that does 20% health of your damage. So it literally has to hit them 5 times with the fire breath, and they're all going to die. Which makes it really hard to actually kill this thing, because you have to kill it really fast. Or else all your creatures are going to die to its fire breath. So you basically just have to get as much damage as you possibly can in a short amount of time before it absolutely wrecks you. And keep in mind, it has a ton of health as well. But at number 4 we have the King Titan, the original final boss of Ark before the Genesis maps came out. And it's a pretty epic battle, but I don't think it's insanely hard. Obviously it is pretty difficult, especially the lower phases of it. I think the Alpha version might be a bit easier because you can sit in the Mega Mech and take it out with the Mega Mech. While the beta ones you don't have the Mega Mech, you basically just have to do with the Titans. But the thing is you can bring Titans to this fight to fight it down. Which does make it easier, even though it is still pretty difficult, because there's a lot you need to worry about in this fight. Obviously, you've got a giant Godzilla attacking you, but you've also got a wave of, like, corrupted Gigas and stuff after you. So you need, like, an army of your own Gigas, and it's definitely a difficult and pretty epic battle. And at number 3, we have the Rockwell fight. This one definitely is a pretty difficult one. you got to go around destroying all the tentacles. And on alpha mode, they have a ton of health. Basically, you have to go around with a like, pump action shotgun. That is the best method to go around. And it takes around like nine shots when you have a uh, alpha version on. Maybe you can get a little bit lower than that. It's a bit easier on gamma because it only takes like two or three. But when you're having to go around and shoot these tentacles like six to seven times, it is definitely difficult. You got these giant like balls chasing you that actually go through whatever creature you're riding and will just hit you directly, which can actually do a ton of damage to you and even kill you really quickly as well as you have reapers and stuff spawning in here and then once you eventually kill all the tentacles they it'll come down and you have to attack his heart with a bunch of creatures and i know some people like to use the cactus stew method where you basically run around but even then it's still a lot of work it's not like just sitting on the back of a UD. you actually have to be on your feet the whole time thinking the entire time and that definitely makes it difficult and a lot more fun too and at number two, I have the Overseer. This one is a really difficult one. The final boss of the island. One of the reasons it makes it so hard is first off, you have to go through the tech cave before you even go to this boss fight, and that's going to wear you down a bunch. You have to fight level like 600 plus Rexes, Aloes, and even Gigas just to go in here. So you're already like beat up and torn down before you even go into the boss fight. And then once you do, you have to fight the Overseer that turns into all three of the different island bosses including the dragon that we already talked about and of course all these versions of the bosses aren't as strong as their original counterparts but still you have to fight all of them again and then you have to fight the overseer who has a stun attack that can dismount you as well as an army of droidicas from star wars chasing you and like droids in the sky too that are shooting you down so this one is definitely a pretty difficult one is why it is at number two and number one we have the master controller this is easily the hardest boss in the entire game Basically, you have to be on foot the whole time while you have an army behind you, like an army of Rexes and stuff like that, to help defend you as you basically run on the ground the entire time because you can't sit on the back of your dino. You have to collect the code keys, which requires you to be on the ground. You have to basically have a bunch of weapons and be moving a bunch. And if you stop for five seconds, you're basically instantly going to die because there's Gigas, Reapers, Rexes, and all that stuff chasing you. 
so you have to be extremely good just to be able to get through here but it makes it fun it's definitely an enjoyable experience but it is really difficult to get to this boss fight and is why it's going to be at number one but that's going to be it for this video if you guys did enjoy make sure to leave a like and also subscribe thanks for watching and bye